Hello, everyone. This is Fernando with Texas United Realty. Thank you for joining us in our webinar. Uh, this is a mandatory meeting, so we are we're hoping that a lot of participants can join us, but um, also hopefully they can see this presentation as well afterwards. Um, so, we'll, um, yeah, the broker Rick Rogers uh, submitted a uh, or notified you guys of a mandatory uh, forms and also specifically with the 2021 Public Improvement District, uh, which is PID is what the acronym we're calling it. And, um, and this is from the House bill that was passed, 1543. And, um, and it's a really critical uh, thing that, essentially it's a, it's a levy tax is really what it is. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as of September 1st, which is just around the corner, all contracts must be written on the revised contract date 11 8 21. Uh, this is going to be real challenging for us because in the beginning we had an, another mandatory uh, for the April 1st um, that was pushed by Trek on the adopted forms. And now here we go again with a new form uh, or new forms that we have to get used to again. Um, so uh, our responsibility as realtors is that uh, for the dot loop, whoever's using dot loop, those are going to be automatically uh, updated uh, on September 1st. But the other um, products that we use also, which is zip forms and transaction desk, uh, some of us use those and we have templates that we use and those templates will not be uh, updated automatically. So it's your responsibility as an agent to manually update those forms that are within your templates for um, zip forms and for transaction desk if you're still using that. But for dot loop accounts, you don't have to do that. So let's first dive in is what is this public improvement district? What is that PID that we're starting to hear about? Um, a public uh, improvement district is a de designated area where property owners uh, pay a special assessment. In other words, there's a, it's a new tax. Uh, these services must benefit the PID area and are supplemented to services already provided by the city. So um, I, I was kind of curious as what are these improvements about? Because I was always like, well, okay, wh what are we doing here? What's the tax for? And here's some, uh, a lot of things that I got wow. from the website and other things that I uh, did research on. Uh, it's landscape improvements, lighting and signs, const constructing or improving perimeter fencing. Uh, it's also going to be working with the HOA as well. Um, um, using special supplemental services for improving and promoting the district, including service related to advertising, promoting, paying expenses incurred in establishing, administering, and operating in the district. So there's a lot of fluff here that I'm going, uh, I thought we were already paying for it, but I guess... You know, my, my thought is we have a mud, I'll, 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 many subdivisions have muds, um, which is the municipal utility district, which is a tax, but I, this, this is an additional tax. And what I've heard, and I need to find out if this is true, is I strongly believe that it's coming from the new builders. The new builders are pushing this. So uh, there's a lot of builders that uh, are, are needing additional funds to develop their, the subdivisions. And I'm thinking a lot has to do with the, the hurricanes we've had and the freezes we've had, and there's just not enough money um, to, to facilitate these needs and this growth. And thus there's a new tax. Uh, that they're so, Fernando, at. is this addition to in addition to the HOA? Yes, in addition to HOA, MUD, and now PID. Okay. It's a third. It's a third tax. If you want to think about it that way. Well, HOA is not a tax, but yeah, it's an additional expense. Yes. So there was a memo that went out to all the agents on August 11th. Uh, this uh, this is from um, Texas Realtors. Mm -hmm. um, legal department saying about the September 1st, sellers will be required to provide a new notice to buyers when selling property located in a PID. And this is very important. If a seller fails to provide the required notice, 
a buyer will have the right to terminate the contract in addition to other penalties. That's very, very critical. And uh, so, uh, some of us or most of us that are listing agents, we need to be very, very cautious of this. So whenever we're doing our listing agreements and listing appointments, and besides having them do the fill in the, the sellers filling in the seller's disclosure, the HOA, the mud, the lead based form, and the, you know, and the mud form, we have to also have this form prepared as well. Okay. Or be knowledgeable of it because we don't want to have this failure in omitting this. And then the buyer finds out, Hey, this, this property is in a PID. Oh, I was thinking about backing up anyway of the contract. And guess what? It's your fault. Well, the sellers and your and the listing agents fault. But so that's very uh, important that you guys need to be um, aware of. Fernando, uh, will SIP forms eventually be updated with these forms? Yeah, September 1st uh, on dot loop, you're going to see it uh, appear automatic, automatically. Okay, what about zip forms? Those you have to do it manually. Will they ever be updated? Zip forms and, and uh, tr transaction does, does not do it automatically. Okay. Yeah. Where do we find these taxes for the PID taxes? Uh, they'll be on the HAR website, uh, but Dot Loop supplies them for us. No, I meant how do we find out if the property we're listing is a part of a PID? Yeah, it, it, that's, it, it's part of the presentation. That's a good question. Okay, so, so new PID notice requirements. So sellers of real property located in a PID must provide notice to buyers, which I just spoke about, prior to the execution of a sales contract. What does that mean, Fernando? This has to be done before everyone signs the contract and executes it. That's very, very critical not after a contract is executed, before a contract is executed, okay? It has to be pr presented. Uh, this notice may be given separately or as an addendum to the contract, applies to sales contracts executed on or after September 1st, uh, applies to condominiums, commercial, unimproved property, the whole enchilada, okay? And then the new notice must contain specific PID information, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And then buyers are required to sign a notice as evidence of receipt. And guess what that receipt's gonna be? It's gonna be what, what date they signed. And they're gonna notice, it, it was it signed before it was executed? Uh, before a contract was executed or after a contract was executed? A separate copy of the notice must be executed by both seller and buyer closing. And so Texas Realtors is working closely with the title industry regarding this new requirement as well. So essentially they're, the buyers and sellers are gonna be signing it twice. Okay. Penalties for failing to provide the PID notice. Buyers may terminate the contract at any time prior to closing. Forget about option period. Forget about, oh, they weren't approved. It didn't appraise. It doesn't matter. If we fail to deliver this, it doesn't matter. Buyers can file a lawsuit for damages after closing. Damages may, re may require a seller to return all costs related to the purchase of the property back to the buyer. This can mean getting the option money back that they paid and the home inspector of $450 and the $80 a termite inspection and the $700 appraisal fee. Okay. So please, you, this, that's the reason also for this mandatory meetings that we need to understand this form and how important it is. Uh, can it be uh, present? Can the PID be presented at the same time as the contract, like the MUD and the HOA is? Right. So, what I strongly suggest, which will 
well, which, which us as agents, uh, listing agents, um, can feel comfortable with is if we post the seller's disclosure, the lead base form, the HOA, the MUD, and the PID form on as an attachment on MLS, then I believe we're strongly protected because we have evidence, right? Uh, and another thing that I've been noticing, because I know you guys know that um, that I signed the DAs and I'm a review, I'm in part of contract uh, compliance. I noticed that the MUD forms are being signed after the fact. And this is going to open a big can of worms because, you, you know, even me back in the old days, so I blame myself too, we're very like complacent. And we go, oh, we'll just do the mud form later. Well, this PID is going to make the mud be exactly the same. If we don't deliver the mud prior, and the mud has an actual at the top of the, if you read the two sentences of, above the mud form, it actually says it has to be delivered before executed date. So this PID is going to make the mud also be part of that where the buyers may terminate the contract at any time prior to closing. The MUD and the PID have to be delivered to the buyers before the executed contract. Okay. All right. So updated sales contracts. Trek has updated the residential sales contract, including the one to four, unapproved. So all this we're going to have to start using, even if there's no PID, in the subdivision, we still have to use these new forms, okay? And here's an example of the new form. Of course, it still says draft, but the main thing that changed is paragraph 6C. It just says public improvement district. It's redlined still. This redlining will disappear on um, midnight on August 30th. And then September 1st, we'll have this new updated uh, one to four. So whenever you guys have an executed contract on September 1st, and I receive it in contract compliance, I'm going to tell you that it's no longer valid. I mean, if I, if I see another one that's a prior re revision, I'm going to tell you guys this is not a valid contract because we have to use this one, even if there is no PID in the subdivision. So when to use the updated contracts? Again, it uses September 1st. Um, so where do we find the PID notice form? Oh. Um, and that was, I believe, uh, Dana, you were asking a question regarding, like, how do we find out this information? Um, each PID is required to maintain a file with the county clerk house. So that has to do more with the PID specifics. We don't really need to know that. But the promulgate, promulgated by TREC form it's a new PID notice form. Um, the addendum con uh, contains notice of obligations to pay improvement districts. Um, and so here's an example of that uh, PID form. This is what you guys are gonna be uh, starting to notice after September 1st. <clears throat> it's called addendum containing notice of obligation to pay improvement district. I kind of pre-filled it out and, uh, and, and you know, whoever is uh, used to, Whoever's used to our church training folders I always have templates of these contracts. And I tend to pre-fill them so like that we have at least some guidance. But so I kind of went ahead and, and just kind of pre-filled this one. Uh, but it's just, it's pretty simple. You're either going to select, it's a county or a city, uh, the address of the property. There's a lot of re re repetition, county or city, county or city, county or city. Um, this information is going to come uh, through, for the tax records, which I'll show in a minute. But uh, I, me and Rick Rogers, the broker, did some research on this. And um, we noticed that uh, the PIDs exist only in Bear County. There's three PIDs, uh, two in Dallas and one in New Braunfels. There's nothing in Harris. We actually contacted some attorneys, real estate attorneys, and also Trek. Uh, we contacted Dawn Moore from Allegiance Title. She's also involved in this. 
<clears throat> forms and pretty much they all told us the same information. So what we can tell right now, as far as our responsibility in Harris County, Fort Bend, um, uh, Montgomery County, there's really no PIDs yet. And, <clears throat> but we, me, Rick, think that these new developers that are building brand new houses will probably start pushing that, the having a PID. So, um, but just so for our own uh, knowledge, the form that we're all, our forms are always going to be identical. Um, it's going to always say like chapter 327. Pretty much our forms will always be that. We're never going to use the other one that they had said that there's a 382, I think. Yeah, this chapter 382, we'll never, we'll never going to use that chapter 382. That actually belongs to Bear County only. Uh, that's the one where San Antonio is located. But us is probably typically always going to be chapter 372 for our forms. So, Fernando, your draft has a uh, 327. Mm -hmm. And then right underneath is chapter. Oh, I'm sorry. It's supposed to. Yeah, good catch. It's 372. I apologize for that. Yeah, good catch. I was in a rush to do, to do this. I apologize. It's supposed to be chapter 372. So that's the only one we're going to be using. Hey, Fernando, this yes, is sir. Simon. How is this even, um, who's passing all these laws uh, regarding the taxes? Is anybody even fighting this? Uh, it, it seems okay. it's uh, unethical anymore when it comes to property taxes here in Texas. It's, we're one of the highest in the nation. And, um, you know, I live in, in down here in Siena. Uh, and in our subdivision, you know, it needs a lot of work. It's brand new, right? It's six, it, you know, my subdivision is only six years old and the roads are tore up. And then when you call the city, it, they tell you, oh, it hasn't been passed down to us yet. It's still under developer, but we're still paying mud tax mm -hmm. and lid tax and property tax. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, all so I know- who's passing these laws? I mean, there's some- this is House Bill 1543. Is anybody fighting this stuff? I mean, it's it sounds like it just everybody's robbing everybody and the people well, it's, just, it's already well, passed. Texas. <laughs> yeah, it's already passed. So you can, contact your state rep and complain. Rick, to Texas. How about you get you contact them, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll buy in an area that has an HOA or a PID. If you don't want to pay those taxes, well, he, or an, or a mud. State reps are listed. That's your avenues. Contact your state reps' office and complain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he, the problem is here that they actually collect all these taxes, but they're not fixing anything. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what to tell you, sir. Yeah, I, I know. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just amazed the stuff getting passed. You say you're in Siena, right? Yes, and it's they're, bad. They're, they're still under majority developers, and they're right. The developers, until they're out of there, they're slow getting the data to the city. The city is going to levy that back to developers, and they're not in any rush. And the city just sit there and collect that, that mud tax all day long. And well, the you, mud you brings know you what? utilities. You know what? These builders and developers, nobody is regulating them. No state agency regulating them. So, yeah. well, <laughs> look at it this way: if you didn't have a mud, you wouldn't have a Sienna. <laughs> <laughs> look at it that way. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, right. I guess it's it. So who, who would I need to contact again one more time? Yeah. Let, let, let me give them their. Let me give you your their phone number. No, just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're well connected like that, Fernando. Good job. <laughs> I, I wish I was. No, I don't have that. That that's that strength or that. You said uh, city representative. That's who we need to talk to. Well, I think what you ought to do is is type. You can just Google House Bill 1543, and I believe from there, if you Google that, they'll they'll start telling you, you okay. know, yeah, who who's the one that. That'll it's, work. It's your state representative that you need help with. The state exactly. is doing it. Not, your, not 
not uh, oh no it's not local right it's not local it's not local it's state and right, you correct. just have to put in where you are and it'll show you your state representative just google it right it's all those down races that no one pays attention to so when Thank these God. guys get in now they're geniuses and they start passing stuff yeah yeah it's terrible okay sorry fernando, I you, have, fernando you have questions in the chat oh, um I I don't yeah, uh, what happened with new constructions that were signed before this date? No, no, no. This is an effect September 1st onward. Okay, and then how will we know if a property is in a PID? Yeah, that's what I'm going to show you in my presentation. Okay. Uh, okay, so, um, so I, this one kind of confused me. It says use of the TREC forms is voluntary, meaning license holders can use this form or use another notice that meets the requirements of the statute, such as the notice filed by the PID. So that one, I'm, I wouldn't want you guys to, to think about it as being voluntary because we are realtors and we need to use TREC forms, but I did see that in the memo. Um, and then it says the updated sales contracts and TREC PID notice will soon be available on the Texas Realtors Forum webpage as, as well. People need to be muted. You can't hear. Yeah, I, I already muted everybody. Uh, thank you. Um, so so the updated sales contract or, or and TREC PID notices will soon be available on the Texas Realtors Forum's webpage as well as through authorized form vendors. Now, one thing that me and Rick were, were doing today is we were doing a lot of research on the website, TREC website, HAR website, other websites, and they're still in development. <clears throat> you know, they're still in draft mode, whatever we would see. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, and, and next next week is September 1st, you know, so it's a mess. It, this is really, really a mess. So we all have to be just, I guess, patient, but working with the government or waiting for the government to do something, you know, I don't know how that works. Um, so uh, completing the PID notice form, because sellers are required to write the notice beginning in nine, but PIDs are not required to file a copy of the completed notice until the next update their service plan. So look about, look at, I mean, here we are going, oh, so we're, we as consumers are required to provide the notice, but whoever's running the PIDs are not required to file a copy of the completed notice until the next update of their service plans. And we're like, what? <laughs> so it's like, we're responsible to say that there is a PID, but if we want to now know more about the PID, oh, they can take their sweet time, essentially. Um, and then it says, it will be necessary to search online for the information required to complete the trip. Well, yeah, but we can't find it at the moment. That's a problem. Um, See what, oh, so here they're talking about how to fill out the form. We just we just looked at it. Oh, here's the 372, the one that uh, Laura corrected me. Thank you, Laura, uh, that we need to be using. Um, and then currently only three PIDs located in Bexar County are created under 382. Um, and then there's some other ones, 3211s, but the ones that we're gonna be using the most is the 372s. So, um, here it talks about the steps <clears throat> on how to determine if a property is located in a PID. Uh, they say the MLS is a good uh, place to start, search for the property address and look under their jurisdiction or tax info tab. Tax information on the MLS is imported from the uh, CAD. So what I did is I went into um, matrix and just a simple thing to do uh, I don't know if some of you guys know how to do this, but I'm, I have the feeling most of y'all do, is whenever you're uh, looking at a property, uh, if, it, it's, if it's in, ex in existence, so for example, if it's sold before, uh, you can always look at old MLS history and go to the tax account number and then just click on the, um, the ID number. And then, of course, it's a, it's a big page. I only did an excerpt. But what they are telling us to do is to go to uh, look at the jurisdiction. Typically, we're always going to see mud. You know, most of most of the properties have mud. But what they're telling us is that it's going to be inside in a row here. 
Again, I couldn't find a property with the PID because it doesn't exist. I tried, but my understanding, the way they're explaining it is that it's gonna be in this particular section called jurisdiction. And there's gonna be a line item, okay? Um, so determine uh, if the property is located in a PID, uh, determine the name of the municipality. Uh, again, all that is gonna be on, on the website. Uh, the website will provide the, um, the name of either the municipality or county. Uh, so that would, that we're still waiting on. We, we don't see nothing that, uh, of that nature yet. Um, so <clears throat> exemptions. So exemptions are, when do we not supposed to use this form? Uh, the exemptions are, um, does not have to apply if there's a, a court order or foreclosure, if it's a trustee sale, um, you know, uh, is a co-owner to another co-owner, uh, spouse or blood relative. So it's kind of similar to uh, the seller's disclosures uh, where they don't have to provide that. Uh, but if you're doing owner, owner uh, fine, I mean, um, you're an owner agent, or if it's lot value, because some, some agents think just because you're selling the land, even though there's a house on it that's not livable, and you're selling it as lot value that, you know, that you still shouldn't supply a seller's disclosure, or you still, you should, still shouldn't supply a lead-based form. Well, that doesn't apply, okay? That's not exempt, I should say. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, I just see some limits of liability. I was a little bit confused about this. Title companies, real estate brokers, and examiners, attorneys are not liable for damages for failing to provide the notice to buyer if, and they give you all the, the ifs here. But uh, just, just so as agents and our responsibility, our fiduciary duties, our integrity, uh, we should always just check to see if the property uh, has a PID once we know how to do that and then um, ensure that it gets done attached to uh, the MLS listing if you have one uh, and then you know proceed uh, with with providing that before the contract's executed. Hey Fernando do we know what developers or if any of the uh, developers in Harris County are looking at uh, adding the PID? Do mm -hmm. we have any idea of any of them? No, I, I wish I did. That's why I was trying to do research. Like when I would Google, you know, cause I love Google, it's my friend. And I would just <laughs> type, and I would just type, where are their PIDs in Harris County? Okay. It would just be blank. Uh, and then I would say, where are PIDs in Montgomery County? You know, I would type stuff like that just to see if I saw anything and I could, nothing would appear. So, okay. yeah, so it was, no, but that's good. Those are good questions. Uh, I maybe, I don't know if uh, most of you guys talk to builders. Um, I know some of you guys have relationships, real close relationships with them. That would be something that maybe I would be picking their brains and go, hey guys, uh, have you heard of this? And where, you know, are you going to be part of that? You know, and just kind of ask that. That talk question. to builders or talk to developers? Yeah, I guess both. But probably developers will probably be more uh, informed on the PID side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so just to reiterate, a summary is uh, all of us have to get used to the new forms again. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I when I go into um, I'm the one that reviews uh, contract compliance and I'm the one that signs your DAs and I'm gonna be looking for this revision date, 11-8-2021. And, and I'm gonna be looking at the executed date. If the executed date says September 1st and you're not using this form, I'm gonna tell you that it's the wrong form. You're not track compliant. So make sure that if you're using zip forms or transaction desk to make sure you update on September 1st, hopefully in the mornings when you get up after coffee, make sure you update those forms. But the forms is to be used so if there is a, 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 a PID tax, right? 
if even if there isn't a PID tax, you still have to use this form. Okay, so for Nana, uh, this new form is uh, understandably it's, this is uploaded in. So this addendum, uh, do we have to still file the addendum with the new contract? If there is a PID located if in that there situation. Is a PID. If there is no PID, we, we Then we it's don't. not applicable, correct. Great, thank you. That's a good question. So uh, on this new form, they added under uh, paragraph 22, you see they added addendum containing uh, notice of obligation for pay, pay improvement district, you know, see? So that's already in here. So, you, but if, but that, if that subdivision doesn't have it, then you don't have to submit this form, but you still have, I still need to see this contract, this, this revision of the contract. So just to, be, just, just to be clear, Fernando, since in Harris County, Montgomery County, Fort mm -hmm. Bend, there is no PID in existence. You don't expect to see a PID form. Correct. But you do expect that we will be using, obviously, the contract starting in 9 1, the new contract in 9 1. Correct. Is that, that is, correct? That is a very clear message. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that clarity. Yes. And people that use that loop don't have to really worry about. No. So, like, like at my, because this happened to me, I, I was working late at night, you know, like all, all of us do in, in real estate. And, uh, and then, uh, I don't know what I did. I was looking for something. And then all of a sudden I saw the form change. <laughs> just like, wait a minute. I was just looking at it. <laughs> so Dalub automatically changes it. Okay. Yeah. Fernando, well, do you know if uh, track has these forms as fillable? Um, you can probably, uh, uh, you're talking about HAR. HAR.com, there's a form section. Uh, what you can do on, on, on uh, HAR is that you can, let me see if I can probably do it real quick. Um, okay. But HAR allows you to, to um, you can go and type, just type in, mm -hmm. you know, forms here or. Right. Okay. And then just go in there and just, you know. Yeah, so you can do that. There's form manager. <clears throat> So HAR has um, uh, uh, another website that I like to go to is um, is called um, Revision Contracts. Uh, it's from Texas Realtors. Okay. And they're, they're black forms. So TexasRealEstate.com. I like to go in here and mm -hmm. here's all the forms that, that um, let me see if I can make this wider okay so here's all the forms and you can go in here and you can even do a control f which means find a form okay. and, okay. and just go in here and and locate the forms and these are edible okay yeah i really like to okay. use i really like this website this is pretty cool yeah yeah and, okay. and this, okay this is part of texas realtors yes you, you guys pay for this out of those 750 dollars you pay every year this is part of it mm -hmm. Yep. If you're always yep, wondering, yep. if you're always wondering, what am I paying seven fifty for? This is it. They, they cover all legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they also cover. Legal. Yeah, they also time. cover legal issues, right? Yes. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, any other questions before we wrap it up? Fernando, this is Barbara. Um, are these two forms the only new forms effective September 1st or are there others? Yeah, so uh, what they did is they updated the one to four, the land or it's called unimproved property. Uh, there's the new residential, I'm sorry, the condo contracts, they're just commercial contracts. So pretty much all of them are updated with the same verbiage. Okay, okay, thank land, you. land is updated now or land after September the September 1st? first. All of these all of these will be updated sep September first. Fernando, go over explain when you said land uh, that has a structure on it, even though it's dilapidated, that you still need the um, you need a lead. seller you need the lead based form, seller's uh -huh. disclosure, and then okay. 
Yes, that's my. Why, that's, why is that? Is that because there's improvement on the land regardless of condition? Correct. Okay. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yeah, good okay, question. Thanks. But yes. Uh -huh. Those are good questions. Thank you. All right. Okay, thanks. Nice. Thank you, guys. Okay, uh, so just so so whenever you get an email from Fernando saying, "Hey, this is the wrong one to four contract." <laughs> Now you know. Oh, Fernando, also tell them I heard the last um, the last webinar you mentioned something about um, um, what do you call it? Um, buyers or 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 tenant representation, and people are not putting the three percent. Maybe you should mention it. Yeah. So you're talking about the um, the rental, hey. yeah, rental clients. Dumbasses. Don't ask. Uh, can you please mute your device up here now? Yeah, you're yeah. talking about the buyer rep agreement. Yeah, yeah, for for the tenant, you know, like when a when a tenancy um changes their mind and they want to buy. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah Mention yes. it to that. Yeah, yeah. So so there's a paragraph in the buyer rep agreement. Uh, not a lot of us use it, but the ones that do use it, um, they tend to only select. 50% because they're saying, oh, I'm just helping them do a rental house, uh, you know, finding a house for lease. But there's a space in there if they want to buy too, because the buyer rep agreement is meant for leasing or helping them buy a house. It's, it, it serves both purposes. And what I notice is that people do not, agents do not put the 3.0%. And and what happens in that situation, so let's just assume that you're helping somebody rent a house and then they go, oh, you know what? As a matter of fact, I got pre-qualified and now I can buy a house and they're going to do a switch now. You were showing them rental houses, but now, hey, fantastic. Now they want to buy a house. Well, now you have to do an amendment to the buyer rep agreement because you fail. You forgot to put 3.0%. So I tell agents. Just put both on that paragraph, put 3.0 and put 50%. That way you don't have to worry about an amendment. It's already there. Yeah. It's like, yeah. or, uh, you know, just, just think, uh, I mean, wouldn't you love to switch, have somebody switch from a rental house to a purchase house? I mean, yeah. That's true. You know, when you said that, Fernando, I went to check my forms. I said, do I do this? Then I said, okay, I'm doing it right. I'm, I'm feeling the yeah, 3%. I mean, just, you know, and t I tend to, whenever I'm hel helping buyers, uh, I mean, uh, tenants look for a rental house, I always tell them, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you get pre qualified? But Fernando, oh. you know, but Fernando, you know, I'm not going to, I know, but can you still do it? Well, why should I do it right now if I'm not going to buy a house? Well, don't you want to know why you can't buy a house? Oh. Would you love to know that? And then That's that way good. I can help you with the rental house for a year or two years. And then you already have an action plan because they told you you need to pay down your student loan or you need to pay off your car or you need to have this or you need to have that. Now you have an yeah. action plan. Yeah. And then in two years, I, I, I call you 60 days before your lease expires and go, hey, how's it going, Johnny? Hey man, uh, are you just thinking? Are you still thinking about renting, or do I want to buy a house? You know what, Fernando? We did all those things that the person told us to do, and we're pretty much done. I'm going to get pre-approved now to see if I qualify. Oh, and That's and the good. and the thing about it is, can you imagine two years from now that you help them to rent? They go, oh, you know what? We don't want to pay rent anymore. We want to buy a house, and then they get pre-qualified and they. They don't. They can't because they of, so <laughs> and then they have to wait another two years. Oh wow! Because that's what happens to me. I I love to help people with rent, you know, to help them lease, and I get calls three years later going, Fernando, remember us? We're ready to buy. We and they already know how I work. They already go, Fernando. We already got a pre qualified. We're ready mm -hmm. to go. I don't have to tell them anything because I already trained them. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So Fernando, yeah. this is this is Dewana. So um, when you have a you're you're helping a buyer buy a house, but the 
the listing agent has put 2% on to the buyer's rep, mm -hmm. but you've got 3% in the, the buyer represent, uh, in right. the agreement. Right. You can just say BRA. Mm -hmm. Buyer rep okay. agreement. Mm -hmm. So in, in that situation, do the buyers usually pay the other 1% or do you just go with the 2%? I always go with the 2% and I never tell the buyers anything. Okay. That's, that's what I've always done. I just wanted and, and to make you, And you know what happens to me? What? They go, Fernando, <laughs> we noticed that you're not getting paid the 1% and you were so good to us. Can we pay the 1% at closing? I go, sure. But you know what I'd rather have? I'd rather have you tell your entire family about me. Mm. <laughs> because when you want to have five members of their family with 3% each versus the mm -hmm. 1% that you missed. Right. Absolutely. And then I always believe in karma. Yeah. And then I, I, let's just say nothing happens, right? I get 2%. I'm fine with it because I don't, I don't see money. I never look at money. And then, or I should say, I never focus on money. And then I get somebody that calls me, goes, Fernando, uh, can you help me? Sure. And then they're paying 4% commission. <laughs> There's your 1% or 2% that you were missing. <laughs> so don't focus wow. on commission, focus on customer satisfaction. Okay. Yeah. Make those people always call you. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm 14 years experience. Okay. I've helped people, uh, buy, a, buy a house and their daughter or son was 15 years old. Guess what happens to those 15 year olds and guess who they call when they're ready to buy a house. You. <laughs> they call me because I'm considered the family realtor. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing to see these guys because they're 25 years old now and they're calling me. They don't go to nobody else. Right. Because they, rem they remember how I, I send them Christmas cards <clears throat> or I text their family and go, hey, are you guys okay with the freeze? Do y'all need any help? Or I text them when there's a hurricane. Yeah, but I always look at, you know, the MLS, what are, whatever the MLS says, you know? I mean, you saw I, that. Yeah, I don't, I just don't focus on that. I, yeah. You know, I know it's, I know as a new agent, you have to, you know, but, mm. but like me, 14 years, I believe in karma and I always think that I'm going to be provided. That's when do you present karma, to Fernando? I'm sorry? That's not karma. That's somebody else. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> um, yeah. What, what was the question? But I don't, no, the question is, when do you present the buyer's agreement? At what point? Like, let's say you just, do you go out to throw a house first? And then... Well, no, the buyer rep agreement, <laughs> the, IAB, the IABS and the buyer rep agreement should be presented before you show houses. Okay. That's what I think. Yeah. Sometimes people but, tell you, oh, I don't want to sign it. And then you yeah, have to. I, but me personally, I don't use buyer rep agreements. Oh, okay. That's a new one. Okay. Yeah, but so, but uh, what I but uh, what I tell them is I go, you can fire me at any time, but I okay. can fire but I can fire you at any time. Okay. But for us to pass compliance, we have to have one in there. Not buyer rep agreements. That's not. We don't. A, that's not a requirement. No. The only time a buyer rep ag agreement is a requirement is if you're mm -hmm. doing, if you're doing intermediary. Or some, oh. or some uh, foreclosures, some banks, when you're doing like HUD homes, you know, foreclosures, okay. things like they do require a buyer rep agreement. Uh, but, but, but at Texas United Realty, we do not require a buyer rep agreement unless it's intermediary. But a good, a good note to remember, if your buyer ends up going to one of these home builders, and they have signed a buyer's rep, they might remember that, that you are their realtor even when they forget at the property. Mm -hmm. And then you can present that buyer's rep agreement to the property, to the builder. And you yeah, can get that. of course. You don't have one previous to them going to that builder. You could be twisting in the wind. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah. yeah. 
but as far as our office, we're not, we don't require bioweapons. Okay. okay. Unless it's inter, unless it's intermediary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Let me see. I think I don't know if there was other chats. Jeff. Mm -hmm. sleep with the, oh, sleep with the angels, everyone. Thank you. Karen. Okay. Good night. All right, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for Good night. Good night.